Hi, this is Raven. In this video I'm going to show you some editing basics so hopefully you can put together a half day submission. Right, before you start editing you need to kind of have a, a plan in mind of what you want to achieve. Uh, let's go to Noah. So once you've got your plan in, in your head, even you know, write it down on a bit of paper. So once you've got your plan um, and you've found the map that you're happy to work with and that works with your plan, because um, that can take some time. I've spent sort of an hour or so just looking at the different maps to see how my plan's going to work. Um, but I would assume you've done that. Um, I'm in Tanoa and I'm just going to do a real basic mission just for the purposes of this demo. Right, just place a unit down uh, and try and get the, the player unit sort of specific to your mission. So I've just put a sniper down there or a marksman as it's called. Um, and I'm just going to focus on a single player scenario. Multiplayer is not that much different but just to give you the basics we'll stick with a, a single player scenario. Um, and there's three things that you need to understand in order to create a half decent mission. And they are waypoints is one of them. Triggers and creating a task which is under systems and Intel. So create task and set task state. They're the only two you really need out of this list to be getting on with. Right, we're going to look at this create task module in more detail and show you how to fill it out. Double click on it and this little window pops up. The first thing we need to look at is owner and as default I believe it's set to this groups of synchronized objects. You can leave it set like that but if you do then you need to sync every module that you want the player to have a notification for to the player. But obviously if you've got loads of these modules scattered across your map and they're all linking to your player you're going to have these lines everywhere and it can get a bit dodgy trying to move stuff. So what I would do is set it to all playable units and then you don't have to link it to the player. The next thing we need to fill out is task ID. Now when I'm editing I only give units and objects names when I absolutely have to but when it comes to modules um, I would get in the habit of giving each one an ID. So TSK1 for task 1 and the next bit we need to fill out is title. So I'm going to say go to the car. Now this title will be the little notification that pops up when this module is triggered. And description is just more detail on the title and this description will be in the brief when you press M for map. Uh, it's up in the top left. I'll show you in a minute. So just a bit more detail. Make your way to the car. And the next thing we need to fill out or sort out is the d destination. Currently set on module position. So you only really want to worry about module position or disabled. Um, and what this means is if it's on module position when you start playing this module will turn into a waypoint marker so I'm just going to put a, a car down okay so we, we want the player to go to the car and this is the module that will tell him to do that but at the moment it's over here so when you play this little waypoint will pop up it's not the end of the world because you can see the car but if if you've got to go to the other side of the map you want the waypoint marker to be quite accurate so once we fill these out we want to move this to actually where you want to go so we'll just put it on top of the car so 
So we'll just put it back for now. Okay. The next thing you need is state. Now state you only really need to worry about created and assigned. And for this we're going to have it on assigned. You would have it on created if you're creating a mission that where you want the player to be able to choose which mission or which task they do first. But we're going to make them do this task so we're going to assign it to them. And then task type is just this little marker, switch marker pops up. So default is like a, a map marker, which is relevant. Um, or you can have sort of car. And show notification, that's ticked as default, which we want. And that's it. So we'll click that OK. And then what you really want to try and do is test every step of the way. So if there's an issue, you'll pick it up straight away rather than doing your whole mission and then find there's, there's a problem and having to sort of do a bit of trial and error to work out where it is. Okay, so I'm just going to test it now. So when I play scenario, all that should happen is we should get a task created for us and it will show like the, the waypoint and a notification. Now we can see the waypoint and we can see where it is, that's actually where we had it. But there was no notification that popped up. Now if we press M and go up to tasks, we can see go to the car, make your way to the car, it's there. So why didn't we get the little notification? Right, the reason we didn't get the notification is because by the time the mission loaded in, the notification had already come and gone, so we missed it. Now, in order to get around this, what I'm going to do is just going to stick a civilian down. And if you click on the little box, you can then go to waypoint and move. I'm just going to stick it down there. So when the mission starts, this guy is going to walk down to there. Now I'm going to use that to drop a trigger. So just place the trigger down, double click on it, and we want to, it hasn't got a size at the moment, so I'm going to make it a rectangle, and I'm going to do 3 by 5. I just want to put it in, in his way. If you hold shift down, you can rotate if you click on it. Alright, so I'm just going to make it a bit bigger to make sure he does go through it. 3 by 8 Okay, and I'm going to put it in front of him. Now when he goes through that trigger, we want it to then pop up the notification. So go back into the trigger, and what we want is activation. So who do we want to activate it? We want civilian, and activation type when he's present so that's a real basic trigger and that's all we need so what we're going to do now is we're going to sync this trigger sync to this module so now rather than this module firing straight away as soon as the the mission loads it'll only fire when this trigger is fired and this trigger is going to be fired when he goes through now, the other thing that will happen is, when the mission loads, this guy will just start running anyway, so we might even miss it again. So to guarantee we don't, what you want to do is go to the bottom of the trigger and timer values. Now, if you set all these to 5, that's 5 seconds, so that gives the trigger a 5 second delay. Now, I've done a bit of trial and error, and if you set it at 20 seconds, when you actually publish the mission, 20 seconds is a good timer for the published mission to load in because this preview mission loads in faster than the published one. So we're just going to test this again now and this should give us the notification.
So you see the guy running off. He's gone through that trigger. We'll just wait for the notification to pop up. Any time now. There you go. Go to the car. Now we've created the task, we need to enable the player to complete it. And that's where set task state module comes in. So if you double click on that, you get this window and it as default it's set on created. So we want to tick succeeded and show notification as default is ticked. So the player will see that notification. Okay. And we need to sync it to this module. So right click, connect, sync to that module, and you'll see the little line as well. So, but at the moment we've got nothing to fire this module off. So I'm just going to move the car closer to the player so we haven't got to run as far. And I'm going to drop another trigger down. Open that trigger. I'll leave it on ellipse and we're going to go 8 by 8 our play is blue 4 so activation blue 4 leave it on present and that's that simple trigger and we obviously want to put it central to the car it's a bit big so try 5 by 5 it's a bit better and we're going to sync this trigger to that module so when the player enters that trigger i.e. gets to the car this trigger will fire this set task state module that belongs to this task okay um, oh and I'm gonna move this right next to the car now we've so sorted all the links out Okay, let's test it out. So, our little man's running off. Goes through that trigger. We've got to wait 20 seconds. There you go, go to the car. And you can see the little marker is actually on the car. So, if we run to the car... There you go, task completed. Okay, so now you know how to create a task complete. Um, we need to know how to do a secondary task to follow on from this. So I'm just going to stick down another car just because it's easier to demonstrate. Um, another trigger. And that was 5 by 5 activate by blue for present and in fact we'll do two of those so you can just copy and paste it's exactly the same and put that over the car we'll leave that one there for a minute now just try and keep your your mission tidy so what we're going to do is move this one over so it's close to this module otherwise it, the lines will start crossing over and it will get a bit awkward. So, new module, create task. Again, all playable units. TSK2. Title, go to second car. Go to the second car. Module position again. Signed, we'll put the car icon on there. That's okay. And I want to put down a trigger, and we don't need to put any size on this. So we just open it up. All we need to do is delete the condition box and paste this in. I'll put this in the uh, video description. And basically what it's doing is this trigger 
will be fired when TSK1 has succeeded. The reason we do, or I do this, um, is if we were to use the same trigger that fires the succeeded to fire the new task, uh, one of two things would happen. Either the two notifications would come out in the wrong order, or only one would come out, and so you'd miss one. So this is the way of sort of ensuring that the notification sequence is correct. So if you remember this task was TSK1. So TSK1 succeeded, this trigger will fire, and we want to sync it to this new task. So this new task goes to the second car. And we want set task state. So when we actually get to the car again, it fires the succeeded. So open up, succeeded, and don't forget to sync that to the module. So once this module's succeeded, this trigger will fire, creating a new task. And when we get to the second car, so don't forget to put this waypoint on the car. So when we get to the car, it will fire this succeeded trigger. Now the reason I copied another trigger is we're going to use this. Um, uh, so type, just go to end one. That's all we need to do. Actually, you want to put a delay on this. So we'll put a delay of, let's say, 10 seconds. So the reason I've done that is the same reason I've done the staggered modules. So we don't want to use the end emission on this trigger because we might miss the completed notification. So we'll just hover, hover that over. So both those triggers will fire when our guy walks in there. And we'll get the notification and then 10 seconds later the emission will end. All right, let's test it out. So off goes our little dude through the trigger. And go to the car. And our little icon's there. So go to the car. Go to task complete. And then task assigned. Go to the second car. Task complete, go to the second car. And now 10 seconds later, the mission will end. There you go. So that concludes this simple tutorial on how to create a basic mission. Um, if you want to know more details or how to do something, message me in the, uh, the video comments and um, I'll either get back to you via comment or I'll create another video showing you how to do so. Alright, good luck guys.